Hello friends, myself Arpan Mangal. So I hope you have already seen my video on Wi-Fi and as I promised that I will deliver lecture on IPv6 as well. So this is a video on IPv6. So as you know, IPv6 is also added just to, uh, in 2016 in GATE and so far there has been no question in GATE on IPv6. So there are very high chances that the, this time there will be one or two questions from this topic. So my suggestion is that just look at this video carefully twice or thrice and you will be, it will be sufficient for you to answer any gate question. You need not muck up anything, just look at this video and try to get, uh, get the basic concept and that will be sufficient. Because whenever the co gate, co whenever from a topic the question is asked for, in the gate for the first time, uh, it will be, it, it's going to be simple. They are not going to ask any difficult question from this. So my suggestion is just no need to cramming, no need to cram anything. Just get the basic idea of why do we need this and all. Fine. So until now, uh, we have IPv, uh, IPv4, Internet Protocol version 4, and now we are heading towards IPv6 version 6. So why do we need IP, uh, IPv6? So there are many reasons. Uh, there is no one reason that uh, we are moving towards IPv6. There are multiple reasons. Because uh, it's, not, uh, it's not easy to move from IPv4 to IPv6. Uh, it's involved a uh, high uh, deployment cost. We need to change every routers because they are, right now they have software to handle IPv4. And now if we want them to handle IPv6, so software has to be installed for that. So it needs high deployment, deployment cost. So there has to be many, many reasons that we need this transition. Okay. So as you know that we are heading towards the Internet of Things means right now uh, we are, uh, we are uh, in the next generation, we are going to have everything, auto, we are heading towards automation. So every gadget, uh, every gadget will be automated. So what we want is that uh, in every gadget, we'll install some software and we want that software to be upgraded automatically. So in future, we need IP, uh, IP addresses for every gadget as well, fine. So as you know that in IPv4, in IPv4, the IP address has 32 bits. So currently we are having two part 32 IP addresses. But as we are moving to our internet of things, we need IP addresses for every gadget. So in future, we are going to run short of the addresses. So that's why we are moving to our, this is one of the reason that we are moving towards IPv6. Though two part 32 is not a small number. And uh, if we have two part 32 addresses as well, we are going to survive for few years. There's no problem. But as I said that this transition from IPv4 to IPv6, it's not simple and it takes time. So we have to keep the future need in also in mind. So that's why in IPv4, in IPv6, we have IP addresses of 128 bit. So right now we are going, then we will have two power 128 addresses. So even if we have to give IP addresses, uh, IP addresses to have, uh, every graduate as well, we are not going to run short of the IP addresses for I think decades. Fine. So this is one of the reasons that uh, we are going towards IPv6. The second important reason is that IPv4 doesn't support audio and video transmission, real-time audio video transmission. So for that also we need IPv6. So IPv6 support audio video transmission. And in IPv4, the encryption is provided at the upper level, uh, application layer. So in IPv6, we have provided this feature in the network layer as well. Uh, one other reason is that authentication. So similarly, uh, uh, right now in IPv4, we, we are providing authentication with the help of application layer. Now we have included this feature in the network layer uh, as well with the help of IPv6. One of the main and important reason to move toward IPv6 is fast processing. This is one of the most important reason we are heading towards IPv6. So if you remember in IPv4, when we pack, send packet from source to receiver and there are many routers in the path, there are many things, there are many things happening on this router. If you remember when packet, uh, when some packet is received by this router, it checks its routing table to decide what is the destination IP. Uh, it all, uh, this, uh, this router is also calculating the header length and the payload length with the help of IPv4 header format. It, it is also responsible for doing fragmentation if it has to do. So there is a lot of processing involved here. So to, to make the processing simple and fast, 
we are going towards ipv6 so when we uh, later on in this video you will you will see that we have included many features uh, in the in the ipv6 by which router ha uh, router is not need to do so many things so it will be fast processing and we have multiple additional functionalities in ipv6 fine so there are multiple reasons we are heading toward ipv6 from ipv4 and right now we are in the transition phase so whenever you get new version for any protocol it's very important that you provide backward compatibility fine because the transition takes time as i said it uh, it's not simple to jump from ipv4 to ipv6 because there are many many routers which we have to change fine so it it involves huge deployment cost so when we come with ipv6 we provide backward compatibility also means if any router is not supporting ipv6 right now and it gets a ipv ipv6 packet it is able to handle that packet okay so now we look at ipv6 header fine so the first field in this header is version field so as i said you that ipv6 header provide backward compatibility means if if right now any router is just supporting ipv4 and it receives the ip it receives the ipv6 packet it should be able to handle fine so the, uh, this is the version field so based on version 4 and version uh, version 6 we write the if it is version 4 it will be 0100 if it is version 6 it will be 0110 it is a 4 bit field the next field we have is a priority field or a traffic class field so if, if you remember in ipv4 in the header you will find three bits for priority fine so when router receive multiple packets and it, uh, and it is conjecture uh, and uh, and so when router receives multi multiple packet in congestion it has to take uh, it has to decide which packet it can discard so based on priority it can discard the packet so this is the field priority field uh, so in case of congestion so router will be able to discard packet for that it is needed and as i said the main reason to move from ipv4 to ipv6 is fast processing so how this fast processing is going on so as i said the uh, the time taken by router in ipv4 was it uh, again for each packet it was checking its routing table to uh, to find the destination address it uh, it has to check whether the packet is fragmented or not or it uh, then it has to do fragmentation so there are multiple things which router has to do in IP, in, in case of ipv4 so in, to do all these thing to to make the process faster the uh, we have flow label in this ipv6 uh, ipv6 header and i I'll, i'll tell you what is flow in just few minutes okay so the next thing we, we have in this header is payload length fine so if you remember in ipv4 we have two fields header length and total length so in in case of ipv4 packet the length of header is not fixed because in options the option field can vary from 20 byte uh, from 0 to 40 bytes so the overall overall length of the header can range is from 20 byte to 60 byte so it's not fixed so we have the field called header length and we have the field called total length so it includes header length plus payload length so in order to uh, in order to get payload length we subtract header length from total length in ipv in case of ipv4 and we get payload length so this is one more thing which router has to find in each packet in case of ipv4 it has to calculate payload length by subtracting total length from uh, by subtracting header length from total length so but in ipv6 we have fixed length header so if you see this is the part which is called base header in case of ipv6 and its length is fixed 40 bytes so we have the field just payload length so router need not to uh, need not calculate payload payload length for each packet it is explicitly given in the header fine in next the next field we have is called next header so in ipv4 in in case of ipv4 to provide multiple functionalities we have the field called options which was variable fine but as i said that we want to in ipv6 we want to keep the header length fixed so that's why in place of option we have a field called next header so whatever options whatever additional functionality uh, the the data packet has to provide we provide in the form of next header 
fine well, i will i will elaborate this pro this process uh, in the in few minutes fine next field we have is hop limit so in t uh, in ipv4 we have a field called ttl time to live this hop limit and ttl is actually the same it represent by from sender to receiver how many hop how many intermediate node the packet has crossed while from uh, from sender to receiver so just the name has changed because hop limit make more sense than time to live otherwise the concept is same it is same as ttl in case of ipv4 then we have source address which is of 128 bit we have destination address which is of 128 bit and this part is called base header so if you see the size the version is 4 bits this is 8 bit 20 bits so total it is 4 byte this row 16 bit 8 bit 8 bit total 4 byte this is 16 byte 16 byte so the total length of the header or the base header if i say uh, say specifically it is 40 byte and it's going to be fixed for every packet so after base header we have certain extension header and data and payload i'll talk about extension header when i will explain this field called next header so now will i'll explain you about flow label field and this is the most important field so pay attention on this field so there are high chances to get question from this tower, this field fine so when suppose this is sender this is receiver there is one process running here and one process running here so this process is sending multiple packets to this receiver fine so if you can uh, if you consider the case of ipv4 each packet has source address destination address and everything so each intermediate router has to explicitly uh, when this packet when these packet pass through intermediate router it has to check destination address by looking at the by looking at the routing table it has to see whether the whether this pack, packet is fragmented or not or whether it's need to be fragmented for the next lan and so many things but if you consider if you see these packets all these packets have same requirements they have multiple things which are same for example these packet all these packets are going to have same source address they are going to have same destination address the additional requirements which uh, uh, the packet wants for at the router likewise uh, that packet can want some bandwidth to be reserved it it can it maybe want some buffer to be reserved so all these additional requirement of these packets are same and the priority of these packets is going to be same fine so suppose the packets require certain bandwidth or certain buffer requirement at, at the intermediate uh, at the intermediate router this is your uh, receiver process this is your sender process so when receiver when sender send one packet to this router it will ask for certain bandwidth and certain certain buffer so if router has a, this, uh, if the router has available that much bandwidth and buffer it will provide to this uh, it will provide to this packet and that packet will be delivered when the second packet reach to this router it may be the case that at that time this router doesn't have that buffer or bandwidth required fine so in this case there will be a delay in in sending these packets but there are application in which we need we do, uh, we cannot uh, we cannot have uh, so we cannot take certain delays suppose uh, in live transmission you want packet to be transmitted fastly without any delay fine so then since these packets have same requirement what we have in ipv6 before sending actual packet this uh, the sender inform all the intermediate routers that i am going to send packets to this receiver which have these priority they require certain buffer and certain bandwidth and all these information is already provided to these routers so they before getting the actual packets these routers prepare themselves and they reserve some bandwidth or buffer all the requirements of those packet beforehand so when this when the sender is actually start transmitting these packets there is no delay in between fine so what is flow 
flow what is flow the stream of packet from one host to the other host is called a flow the stream of packet from one host to the other host is called flow so there are two ways in which the sender can inform the intermediate routers about the requirement of the packet it's going to send to the receiver so the first way is send control packet so before actual transmission the sender can send some control packet which have all the information about the packets about the source address destination address all the bandwidths all the requirement of these packet the priority of packet and these control packet when seen by this router it it will check whether it is capable of providing that many requirement for this packet beforehand and they will reserve the space for, uh, and they will be ready to receive that packet if this router is unable at the at the current time if this router is unable to provide that many bandwidth or buffer requirement whatever the requirement of the packet uh, of the packets are it can send the icmp packet informing this source that there is some problem he is not ready to pro to provide all the services fine so only when after sending the control packet only when all the routers <coughs> all the routers are ready and uh, are ready to provide all the services to this packet then only this sender start sending this all start sending its packet so there will be no delay in between fine there is a second way so with the help of extension header you will be get to know uh, in few minutes what are the use so with the help of extension header also the router uh, the sender can inform the intermediate router about the about the packet or about the flow fine so in this control packet so in, in the first case when the sender sent control packet to to these intermediate router so uh, in this in this packet it in, uh, it uh, give information for the time also so what uh, up to what uh, up to what time the sender want to send packet to this receiver so for that many period of time the router will reserve the uh, space for this these uh, packet of this sender fine so how it helps in processing how it helps in processing at the router end so in case of ipv4 the router has to uh, as i uh, repeated multiple time the router has to check his routing table get the destination address it has to process the uh, header length and the total length to find the payload length it has to see whether fragmentation is there or not it has to see whether the uh, buffer required for this packet or not and all these things but since in ipv6 the sender has already uh, informed prior to sending the packet all the information the router maintain a table called flow table so when this intermediate router receives this inter they receive this control packet it gives flow to this transmission so there will be a flow number so the in flow table what we have is source address flow label and the requirement so at each router after receiving this control packet at each router this table will be maintained in each uh, in this table what we have, what it is store is the address of the source the flow label it has so before sending uh, before sending the packet uh, the flow requirement has given the so this uh, icmp packet also contain the flow label so to these these requirement it has uh, that is called a flow the requirement has given certain number so that router can identify which flow the sender is asking about so it may, uh, it maintains a label called flow label so it's just a number let's say 8 and all the requirements are written here for bandwidth buffer and all these things so when this when this sender is act start actually is, it actually start sending the packet the router has to do nothing but but just to check this flow table with the help of source address and the flow label provided in this ipv uh, ipv6 packet the router ha just has to check the which flow this packet is coming from and which source address it's coming from and it will get all the buffers and all the bandwidth it has already saved for this transmission
fine. So in this way, router need not to uh, explicitly check each packet. It just check the, its flow label and source header, and it already know what are the requirement of this packet. So in this way, the flow label field help in fast processing at the router. And it helps in overall transmission because each packet has to pass through multiple intermediate routers. So overall, if you see, uh, individually you, you can see that how much time it takes to just, uh, it's just checking the routing table and just calculating the header length. But overall, if you see, there's a huge time saving in this process. So in order to, pro uh, in order to avoid confusion, the flow label has to be unique. So at, if at this sender and this receiver, multiple processes are going on, then if this process is sending some packet, so this process, fine. So to this transmission, a unique label has to be provided. So suppose if this transmission is provided with label 8, then if this process starts sending some packet to this, pro pa uh, this process, then it cannot be provided the same label 8, it has to be some different packet, fine. So the flow label has to be unique. So as I said that we, we are still on the transition phase that uh, we are moving ahead for, from IPv4 to IPv6. So it's not mandatory, uh, it's not mandatory that every router is uh, capable of processing the IPv6 header, fine. So it's not, uh, it's not necessary to provide flow uh, in the packet. So if you are not uh, want to use that service, you can, fork, uh, you can leave this field as empty as well, fine. Or if uh, some intermediate router, if some intermediate router is just uh, running IPv4, then it will ignore the concept of this flow label and all. 